The first time I've ever been asked to talk about my lab, uh, there really isn't very much. Um, my office is um, pretty small, and I have a laptop computer, this one that's right here. And that's, that's basically my lab. Um, I'm in the physics department, and I do theoretical physics. About half of my research is devoted to the theory of metals and crystals. Uh, the other half, um, in recent years, I've been working on biological physics, um, working first on problems in the um, uh, mechanical properties of virus capsids, and then more recently working on, um, uh, working on RNA. Um, Collaborators in this work include Ben Sauerwein, my graduate student, who's going to speak to you soon, and also some uh, collaborators at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, Yvette Fahar and one of her students from the uh, Computational Biology Department. Uh, we work together on, um, on virus capsids. And um, then also I began working with Bino John um, about a year and a half ago at uh, the University of Pittsburgh Computational Biology Department. Um, and we work together on studies of um, physical principles underlying RNA interference. And um, uh, from this interesting study of, that involved RNA secondary structure, also some dynamical questions arose. And the dynamical questions are going to be um, what Ben Sauerbein is focusing on for his time. So, um, I think I'll just turn it over to Ben. Thank you for the introduction, Mike. I'm Ben Sauerwein, and today I'll be talking to you about the point notes of rival switch and transcriptional terminators. So the first question you might have is, what is a rival switch? Uh-oh. Uh, there. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So, at any rate, you may uh, be wondering what is a ribose switch and what does it do? So, uh, primitive bacteria, such as any of those, Bacillus subtilis, as we'll see, and make bacteria in the Streptococcus family, have a mechanism whereby they can sense the presence of a ligand or some useful chemical in solution and based on whether or not they transcribe some gene on the presence of said ligand. And the remarkable thing about RNA of viral switches is that, in fact, this is entirely done on the 5' prime untranslated region of the RNA, and it actually terminates transcription, as you can see uh, in this diagram. But I think this was originally intended to show the transcription of a complete RNA, but there's nothing wrong with this being a perfectly good picture of the uh, effects of the ribose switch should, should the gene become unnecessary. So it does this by means of two basic regions, one being the actinomer region, which this is a possible example of, and an expression platform called the transcriptional terminator. So what will happen here is the apple will transcribe and reach some confirmation under transcription. And should the ligand be present, it will align with this apple and stabilize the structure. Now by virtue of whether or not the structure is stabilized, it may be intruded upon by the transcriptional terminator, or it may allow the transcriptional terminator to nucleate. In this case, you see the switch is bound off. And that is to say that should the ligand be bound, the transcriptional terminator will, will form, and by virtue of some steric interaction with the RNA polymerase, will cease the transcription of the gene at this little polyuracil site just after the transcriptional terminator. Now, there's no reason this had to be the case. There are also instances of bound on switches, which is to say that should the aptimer be bound, it will sequester part of the transcriptional terminator and not allow the uh, and not allow the gene to terminate or transcribe the entire message of RNA. So immediately we see, a, we see an issue here, and that is that we have a 50 or so nucleotide transcriptional terminator, but at a biological transcription rate of 50 nucleotides per second for a, a typical prokaryote, 
we have to make a decision as to whether or not we're going to terminate in this short transcriptional terminator region before we reach this polyuracil site just, just after it. So what we would like to know then is are these biological terminator hairpins selected for efficiency in their following pathways? Or are they somehow selected so that they should form quickly and not in, uh, in not say, thermodynamically? So as test cases we, which we selected based on their presence in the literature, we decided to study purine and FMN rival switches in Bacillus subtilis and in the Streptococcus family in general. And the reason for this is that while it is certainly easy to generate a very large family of aptamer regions by virtue of alignment of the genomes, it's not easy to align the hairpins because since the hairpins interaction is based on a steric property or a collision with the RNA polymerase, it doesn't really matter what the nucleotide sequence is on the terminator proper. It only matters that the terminator ultimate, uh, the terminator's MFE conformation, minimum free energy, is a some sort of a long term. So we had to compare to literature to actually locate the terminator, terminator hairpins downstream from the atom. In order to uh, study these, these sequences, we use the Vienna RNA packet, which you may be familiar with. And this features RNA fold.